things from Color Tile. Over 30 locations in Southern California. Check information for your nearest Color Tile. Bank of America's world headquarters. It's a big building. It's a big bank. It's got, oh, 60 billion in assets, more than a thousand offices all over the state. But banks are like people. It's not how big you are or how many assets you have. It's how deep. We interrupt this commercial to bring you some special news that has just broken. A Mr. G. Barry Golson has just given Tom Brokaw some important information. Back to you, Tom. Campbell takes it off the backboards. Thompson by himself, being checked from behind by... The November issue of Playboy, which will be out sometime next month, has in it a lengthy interview with Jimmy Carter. And in, in, in that interview, there are many expressions from Mr. Carter that we have not seen before, some of them quite remarkable for their candor and for their insight into the man and his personal and religious beliefs. The interview was conducted by Robert Shear, who is a freelance journalist from Berkeley who does Playboy interview interviews that it has in the past with Jerry Brown, the governor of California, and Barry Golson, who is a Playboy magazine editor, the editor of that particular section of the magazine. If they are different in appearance, it works effectively for them. They say as well, when they conduct these interviews, you described it as a kind of Mutt and Jeff technique, I guess, the two of you going off to interview someone. Yeah, I said, basically, well, I did, uh, followed Carter for about three, four months and asked all the questions I had, and uh, basically, I guess, was the aggressive reporter, and Barry came in as the uh, sophisticated diplomat, and uh, actually, it turned out that Barry asked the key question in the interview, uh, and which we'll get to later, but the one that, as we were leaving, going out the door, and so it worked out quite effectively. Altogether, how much time did you spend with him, over what over what span of time? It was uh, over a three-month period, April, May, June, and it w came out to about five, six hours, but uh, sometimes it was ten minutes and sometimes it was an hour. And, uh, you know, catching him on the plane, catching him at home, so forth. Which became a little harrowing for us because Bob would call me up about every two weeks and say, Barry, I got another ten minutes. Can you keep me on the trail for a little while longer? And uh, eventually we piled up enough time. Okay, what we're going to do with this interview, because it is hard on television, to show you a print interview, we are going to show you some selected quotes from Mr. Carter, and we are going to run those quotes over pictures of Mr. Shear and Mr. Golson as they met with him the final time at his home in Playboy, and rather in Plains, Georgia. It is not yet Playboy, Georgia. <laughs> at any rate, here is what Mr. Carter had to say about the question that was raised by Playboy magazine on the appointment of judges. The question was this. Would you appoint judges who would be harsh or lenient toward victimless crimes, offenses such as drug use, adultery, sodomy, and homosexuality? And Carter responded, committing adultery, according to the Bible, which I, well, I believe in, is a sin. For us to hate one another, for us to have sexual intercourse outside marriage, for us to engage in homosexual activities, for us to steal, for us to lie, all these are sins. But Jesus teaches us not to judge other people. Continuing, Carter says, but as to appointing judges, that would be, not be the basis on which I would appoint them. I think it would be inappropriate to ask them how they were going to rule on a particular question before I appointed them. The question really is, wouldn't he be more naturally drawn to judges or prospective judges who re reflect his strict views about personal behavior? I don't think so. I think Carter's going to appoint civil libertarian judges. Uh, I. I think it, there is a separation between his uh, church views and not only his state views, but the way he's conducted his life. His kids don't go to church. They lead a pretty free-willing life. Uh, one of his sisters, his brother, uh, they don't go to church. You know, I don't think Carter has imposed the, uh, these strict religious views on his own family, so I don't think he's going to impose them on the country. What bothers me about Carter is that, yes, I think he'll appoint good civil libertarian judges, but he wants to make us all feel guilty when we fornicate, when we're outside of marriage, you know? And a large number of American people uh, live in what Carter would describe as a state of sin. And it would be nice to have a president for once who didn't make us feel guilty about that. You know? We got to the question, or Playboy got to the question of his own personal moral standards versus his political beliefs, and the question came in this form. Playboy, you say morality can't be legislated, yet you support certain laws because they preserve old moral standards. And how do you reconcile those positions? Carter responded, I believe people should honor civil laws. If there is a conflict between God's law and civil law, we should honor God's law, but we should be willing to accept civil punishment. Does that indicate, do you think, that he'd be much more tolerant of demonstrators and people who opposed his point of view as president than, say, were Richard Nixon or Lyndon Johnson? 
I think so. Again, I think uh, there is, I don't agree with the fear of Carter as the Baptist, as the uh, conservative Southerner. I think that uh, this is Carter's strong suit, as a matter of fact, and I think that he will probably be one of the more tolerant American presidents. I think in the interview, uh, there are areas that come up that are more troublesome, for instance, in foreign policy, where he may be more aggressive than Ford, but I don't think civil liberties is the problem. And as far as this goes, he couldn't have been clearer about saying that his own moral beliefs would in no way affect his, uh, his political stance. The most remarkable part of this whole interview came as you were leaving the House in Plains, Georgia, after an extensive taping session. Can you briefly, Barry, describe for us how this came about? Yeah, Bob uh, and I had uh, picked up our tape recording equipment and were ready to be ushered out the door. In fact, a, a press aide uh, had the door open behind us, and we tossed off a question. We said, uh, the most important question that we've heard is uh, about your religious beliefs and how it would affect your, your political behavior. Do you feel you've reassured people? And he absolutely would not let us go for 20 minutes with other appointments pending. He delivered a monologue that we found rather remarkable. And he knew that you were tape recording. This. He did indeed. All right, here are some selected quotes from that uh, monologue. Carter is saying, I don't accept any domination of my life by the Baptist Church, none. I try not to commit a deliberate sin. I recognize that I'm going to do it anyhow because I'm human and I'm tempted. And Christ set some impossible standards for us. Christ said, I tell you that anyone who looks on a woman with lust has in his heart already committed adultery. I've looked on a lot of women with lust, said Carter. I've committed adultery in my heart many times. This is something that God recognizes I will do, and I have done it, and God forgives me for it. But that doesn't mean that I condemn someone who not only looks on a woman with lust, but who leaves his wife and shacks up with someone out of wedlock, Jimmy Carter. Christ says, don't consider yourself better than someone else because one guy screws a whole bunch of women while the other guy is loyal to his wife. I don't inject these beliefs in my answers to your secular questions. But I don't think I would ever take on the same frame of mind that Nixon or Johnson did. Lying, cheating, and distorting the truth. Not taking into consideration my hope for my strength of character. I think that my religious beliefs alone would prevent that from happening to me. I have that confidence, said Jimmy Carter. I hope it is justified. Well, that is a remarkably candid point of view for a presidential candidate, a man who has been extremely cautious in almost all of his public pronouncements. He uses language in there that we've not heard from Jimmy Carter before. He raises very controversial subjects. Why do you think he did it? I think in part it was manipulative, that there are a lot of non-voters who uh, turned off politicians who seem to be sanctimonious and self-righteous. And we kept hitting them on that in the interview. Aren't you holier than thou and what makes you so good and, you know, don't you ever mess up and so forth. And I think, uh, you know, he wanted to get through to those people, to the younger people who are not going to vote. On the other hand, I think that frustration was genuine. We were standing up. And, you know, his face tightened up, and he's, you know, he gave us this, this speech. And again, it's annoying to me. I think that's the real Carter. I think the real Carter does lust after women just like the rest of us do. I don't think God cares whether Carter lusts after women, and I think Carter knows that, you see. But again, it's that guilt thing that he has to stick in. We had a talk with Jody Powell, who was his press secretary shortly before we went on the air this morning. He has seen the interview, which has not yet been published, by the way. This is the first that anyone outside of Playboy has seen it. And he said that this is what he has been trying to convey for 18 months. That these are personal points of view that Jimmy Carter has, but as he indicates very strongly in the interview, he would not try to impose them on other people. And I gather that's the conclusion you're left with as well. Yeah, and I would agree that the last bit was perhaps calculated. But unless he's an awfully good actor, if you had been there and seen him tighten up his fist and say, I would not, uh, I think it's, it's very clear that it came from somewhere yeah, deep down. Yeah, and another point, we said, I wouldn't break down a door to see if you're fornicating. Yeah. All right, we, we've run out of time now. It's time for a station break. A box office giant, airport 1975, tonight on NBC. During Whirlpool Week at the Broadway, there's something good for every corner of your kitchen, like this two-speed...